All right, the 10 biggest lies of the enemy. The 10 biggest lies of the enemy and how to combat them. 10 biggest lies of the enemy and how to combat them. We're starting chapter six today. Chapter six, so we're digging into the third lie that we're, um, that we're discovering out of 10. So lie number three today is God is not a good father. God is not a good father. So we're introducing this lie and um, looking at what that lie sounds like, speaking the lie, and then encountering the truth. So that's where we're at today. Page 59 is where this starts, and it goes through to page 67. So there was a lot of content here today. I feel like I underlined almost everything, to be honest with you. You know, um, I hope that when you're going, when you're getting into this, that you read it and that you read it again and that you get into the scripture and that you really, really let this sit with you. Okay. So the lie, God is not a good father. Um, he, he, he really talks a lot about fear, about fear and how fear it's interesting the way that he says, if you follow the fear, you will discover the source of the original wound. And I think if, if you're a person that deals with fear or if certain things scare you, certain other things might not scare you, um, it's very interesting to sort of track that back to those original wounds and how a couple of incidences that that are similar in nature can really take hold you know um and i and i think i need to say here that fear doesn't always fear can manifest as anger fear can manifest as anxiety fear can manifest as depression we have to really get back to you know what am i feeling what am i feeling where does that come from what am i feeling um because just because it's lashing out or acting out doesn't mean that it's really not that underlying emotion is not fear okay um, but if we if we track our fear we, we can get to the root of the wound um, you know fear is not of God you know it's a major doorway for the enemy uh, he lists that you know it keeps us from embracing our identity and um, it's destructive it, it can cause us to be destructive towards others in the world around us. It, it can cause this um, destruction on our part in our relationship with God. And even cause us to be destructive to ourselves, To do things or to withhold things. Um, depending on how you really look at that perspective. Uh, you know, we may do things to ourselves or we may keep ourselves from having things or from doing things that we need to do with that fear. Uh, but definitely fear is not of God. And that's, you know, the author, you know, references 1 John 4, 18, uh, you know, because God is love and, and perfect love casts out fear. That's right there in scripture. Perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. You know, there's no fear in love. And so, you know, I think the way that we have to sort of counter this is to realize that God, that that, that Trinity, remember, it, it, he talks about like just letting God's love. We have to come to accept that. He, and, and I think about the Trinity and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit being that relationship of love between the Father and the Son. You know, and if we go to that place and abide there and try to just enter into that relationship that is safe, the, the enemy would have us believe that it's not safe. But if we take a risk and enter into that relationship in the, in that, in the midst of that relationship, the Holy Spirit being that relationship of love between the Father and the Son, we can go abide there and try to live from that place we begin to accept that truth that drives out the fear it's accepting that truth you can know it we have to come to accept it and and that scripture verse that's one of them to put in your tool belt you know for whenever you find yourself being fearful to be able to recite your to yourself we've we can't forget that 
We may have spent 30 years sending ourselves a message of fear. We have to have something that we can pull, pull out and to counter that when it's happening. We have to have a truth. And, and the scripture is truth. We have to have that truth. Okay? We have to have that truth. Um, you know, it talks about how the enemy tries to move us to those places of fear. He's evil and he lies and he waits to prey on our life experiences. The author talks about how our, our earthly familial relationships can impact our view of God. That's so true. You know, um, if there's been some discord, if there's issues in that family of origin, that is going to tint the filter with which we, how we have that relationship with God on our part, not on God's part. Okay, we have to press into that. We have to look at that. We spent some some of the earlier days here talking about that a little bit, but this is this is where you press into that. Okay, this is where you press into that for sure, um, because and you know the way that Satan works, these life experiences are a doorway. You know, these life experiences are, are a doorway, and it's not to say. That those things that happened, they're, they're true, they're real, and they really did happen, and they really did hurt. So it's not our actual experience that's the lie, but it's the, it's the takeaway that we have from it. If it's, unpro if it's unprocessed, if we haven't pondered it, that takeaway, we might come to reflect God in that takeaway. That God doesn't care about the details of our life. That God doesn't... That God is not a good father. Well, our earthly father, it may be a fallen man. Our earthly, our family origins, the people that were supposed to protect us, maybe it's a grandfather. That is going to, it, that, that could inf influence the way that you see the father. And you have to really, it may be that you're scared of God. It may be that you're, you're comfortable going to Jesus, but not God as father. Um, we have to look at that. We definitely have to look at that. Um, we see how um, we go to Genesis chapter 2 and 3 and see where it, where it came from. A lot of interesting and um, education in how Satan entered in and what happened in the garden and how that separated us, how we were tempted. God gave us all this goodness and we were abiding with him in a place of perfection. And he just gave us one, one rule, one thing to follow. And it's that one thing that Satan came in and used to separate us. You know, there's a lot of talk about free will. We might, we might really struggle with bad things happening to good people or bad things happening. And, and we might try to blame God for that. So there's this education today about free will, about if God were to really come in and take away our choice, take away that um, fallout, if you will, from the choice of even Adam, that that's not really love, that's control. You know, and so we have to we have to embrace that. We have to look at that 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 he wants us to freely choose him. He wants us to freely choose him. A lot of, um, a lot of good stuff about Adam and Eve and, and the beginning and the fall. You know, Satan lies. He, he utters his first lie. The first attack in the garden was against God's fatherhood. If that wasn't important, to, to our life in this world, that wouldn't have been the first place that Satan attacked. The very first attack, just his, con, con, he's conniving, you know, was this subtle attack against the one thing that God said for us to not do for our own good. And that's the thing that he tried to tempt us with. Okay. And, and he, pulls us into this 
belief that God's not a good father, that God doesn't want our ultimate good. He lies, he lies, he lies. And he was a murderer from the beginning because it was in that lie and in our belief in Satan instead of the belief of God as a good father um, that it all began. You know, this is where, this is where it all falls apart. And, and we have to look at that perspective. We have to really look that it, this, this world that we live in today is the fallout of our parents and their choice. Our parents and Adam and Eve and their choice, you know, um, they rejected the divine life that they received from God. He is the creator. We are the created. He does know better than we do. We can't make ourselves our own God. Okay. We reject his love. We have to embrace his love. We have to embrace his love. It's really good stuff today. God's not going to snap his fingers because that doesn't allow us free will. All right? There's love there and we have to embrace it. God is love. I think of that Chris Tomlin song, Good, Good Father. You know, if you struggle with this and with God being a good father, I recommend like that song on repeat. It's just, it puts in these it's this message. You just have to counter this message over and over and over and over and over again until it you come to believe it. You know, to remedy this separation that we have with God, um, God continued to try to reconcile uh, to his people. And that's why, you know, you have all these covenants with 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 Noah and David and, you know, Moses, you know, all the God continually trying to come back through his people. But we, it all falls short. And so he became one of us and he sent Jesus. He became one of us. He became one of us. And he sent Jesus. And Jesus is the answer, you know. We're born into a fallen world and every moment of difficulty, every moment of suffering comes from this disability, but it's an opportunity for us to turn to the Father through Jesus Christ. He is a good Father and He's not abandoned us. You know, it talks a lot about suffering and, you know, there's a practice of redemptive suffering and that we can offer the sufferings that we have in this fallen world uh, for prayer. We're going to suffer in this world because this world has fallen. This is not our final destination. There's a lot of suffering, sin, and death in the world today. We have to remember who we belong to. We belong to a good father. Satan tried to steal your identity. Satan tried to steal your identity in the garden. He lied. He lied. He lied. It's up to us to find truth and embrace it, to find God's truth. It's up to us to do that. Go to the Word. What does it say in here? I, don't, I can't remember where, but God uttered one word in response to this separation from Him. The Word. <laughs> That's like a power statement right there, you know? The Scripture verses in Isaiah... Read Genesis 2 and 3. You'll recognize that Satan was, Satan was walking upright until he did this. Look for that in, in 2 and 3. Satan was actually walking upright. And as a result, God cast him to his belly. And I will put enmity between your offspring and hers. There's a lot happened there, you guys. Go in and read 2 and 3 of Genesis. How would your approach to life, relationships, and prayer change if you lived from the foundational belief that God is a good father who wants our happiness and ultimate fulfillment? I think it all stems from that. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. When you can live in that place, there is no fear. 
If you can, if you can go to that place and truly embrace your identity, the identity that Satan tried to steal from you, there's no fear there. There's no fear. It's the safest. It's the, it's just, it's safe. It doesn't matter what comes against you. Press into this today, you guys. Press into this. There's, there's a lot here. Five or six pages. Seven pages. There's a lot here. Press into it. Tomorrow we will unsheath the sword of the Spirit. Hope you have a good Tuesday. God bless you. I'll see you in the morning at 7 a.m.